And we have a go for auto sequence start. T minus 17 seconds and count. All systems are go. Start. Two, one, boost ignition and lift off. It's time to charge up with Victor Pisano. You ever feel like you need a reboot in this crazy non-stop pressure-filled world we live in? Hey everybody, it's Victor Pisano and welcome to another edition of the PowerCast from Charge Up. You know, we rely so much on our computers these days, so I'm going to use that analogy because I think you'll be able to relate to me on this one. Do you ever have one of those days where you feel exactly like the green screen on your computer after a malfunction? You know, your mind is numb, you lack the emotion to even be concerned. You just stare at that screen like a zombie in a trance. For me, once I come to, I simply follow the advice that any computer expert's going to give you. I'm going to tell you to reboot. See, I go back and I think, I used to think 14 to 16 hour days were the norm when I started this pursuit to earn the perfect career. Now I'm knocking on the door at 50 and I can tell you the body and the mind, they don't respond like they used to. In other words, I seem like I'm getting the green screen more often these days. Heavy workloads, long hours, tight deadlines, leading others, low morale. You see, all of these things are going to contribute to workplace stress. And stress in the workplace, that's going to cause you to be tired and angry. You're going to be apathetic and it's going to result in a reduction of productivity. At a certain point, you see, you're actually causing more harm than good, both to your work and your body. I'm going to stress you out even more. Listen to these facts. 71%. That's the percentage of American workers who consider their workplace a significant source of stress. It costs U.S. companies $68 billion a year for healthcare utilization induced by that stress. And what's the annual cost to employers in stress-related healthcare and missed work? $300 billion. On average, there's a 10% reduction in profit simply caused by stress-related health care. This is where it's critical to be self-aware. You've got to understand your triggers, your limitations, because if you can take action, you can find ways to reboot. Sometimes we simply just need to breathe, trust the process, let go for a bit. It's okay to focus your energy on you from time to time. Look, we're talking about computers, so let's look at it this way. Don't look at it as being lazy, but rather put yourself on an energy saving mode. In the spirit of always being a part of the solution rather than the problem, I'm going to offer you some ways you can reduce the stress and find some inner peace. So here are 10 ideas for you. Number one, set realistic deadlines. I think one thing that we do is we look at a project and instead of breaking it up into pieces, we assume. And once we assume, we start running into tight deadlines. And with tight deadlines, that's going to come with stress. With tight deadlines, mistakes are going to start to happen. You've got to set realistic deadlines, and that's simply by approaching a situation, look at it piece by piece, go micro into it. A lot the time necessary for each. A lot the resources. What are you going to delegate? Well, who's accountable? Think of all these things as you put it together. Then set your deadline. The next thing you need to do is prioritize. Prioritization is simple if you just take a realistic approach to it. What has to be done? what's important. And don't always look at it as what you think is important. What's important for the greater good, the sum of all the parts. Sometimes it's simply going to be a day of oversight. It's going to be a day of building teams. It's going to be a day in the field. You've got to allocate the right time for paperwork, for mentoring, for leadership roles, for meetings. And I think that's the biggest frustration a lot of people have is they want to prioritize. But the problem is they're constantly being pulled into meetings. Well, if you know that, Go ahead and make that assumption on the front end. That'll make it easier for you to develop a schedule and prioritize the things that need to be done. The third item, and one that I personally have done for probably over 20 years, is plan your week ahead of time. In other words, on Sundays, take 30 minutes, put pen to paper, and simply write down what comes to mind for things you need to accomplish during the week. Don't worry about prioritizing. Don't worry about short-term and long-term. Just write down what's on your mind. Write down those tasks that you know need to be done. Once you get them all out, it's simple to go by and put one, two, three. One is the highest prioritization, three is the least. Just go by and look at it from there. Then try to allocate time for each. That way you can get a good mental picture of how you're going to prepare for your week. Next up, review your to-do list every morning. Okay, so you put the work in on Sunday. You have a pretty good idea of what your week's going to look like. Review it. Take a look at that specific day. Take into account unexpected things like meetings, phone calls, etc. Things that aren't necessarily in your to-do list, but review it. Set some goals for yourself. Some small ones and some big ones because you want to find an accomplishment each and every day. Number five, remember to breathe. Pretty simple, but it's got to be on this list because some of us spend hours staring at a screen or looking at analytics and trends and reports. We forget sometimes just to stand up and breathe for a second. 
We get frustrated. Stand up, breathe, walk around. In other words, don't stay in one position. Don't stay staring at a screen for hours upon hours because all it's going to do is make you tired, stressed. Get up, get out, go get some fresh air. Five minutes is not going to close a business down. Take care of yourself. Manage expectations. What's difficult in a leadership role, you not only have to do this for yourself, but you've got to do it for everybody else on your team. So be realistic about it. When you see people within your team taking on projects that may be unrealistic or they haven't allotted enough time, resources, support, etc., you have to manage that expectation. And that's why being involved, mentoring, being a part of their process, being a part of their planning is critical because you can help them because if they don't meet their own expectations, frustration is going to occur and then it's going to affect the team. It's going to affect morale. More important, it's going to affect the objective at hand. So be involved and manage expectations. Number seven is a tough one. Learn when to say no. As leaders, we feel invincible. There's nothing we're going to say no to. That's just how we're built. That's how we're wired. But in reality, there has to come a point you say no. Sometimes no is simply delegating. Sometimes no is simply empowering somebody else. But you've got to put that word inside of your vocabulary. You have to learn to say no. And it's a very difficult thing to do, but get in the habit. Once you do, you're going to find you're more effective and the stress levels drop just that much more. Number eight, delegate. So we just talked about that with learning to say no. Delegation is not a bad thing. When you have items on your to-do list, when you have certain projects that you know you can entrust somebody else with, do it. Again, use your time effectively. Would you rather do reports or emails that could be done by somebody else or use that time to develop part of your team? Use that time to create analytics to show where the results are, to show where the opportunities are. In other words, you've got to prioritize exactly what your role is and what needs to be done. Those things that are simple, those things that can easily be delegated, do it. You're going to find you're going to have more time on your hands, less stress, and there's that inner peace. And that's our goal. Number nine is exercise. And I'll be completely honest with you. This is something that I do not prioritize. This is something that does not make my list. It seems like it's the thing that continues to drop down my list. When you start your morning off and you feel productive, and then you start with meetings, and then you start with phone calls, before you know it, it's seven, eight o'clock. You've got time with family. You're not going to exercise. You're not going to do it. What I have found, the only time I'm successful at exercising is if I start my day off with it. If it becomes part of a routine and it's the first thing I do to begin my day, that's where the habit has to be created because exercise is critical because now we're talking about body and mind function and that's going to be a result of exercise. So you've got to stay healthy and rounding out the list is improve your diet. You knew it was going to follow exercise, improving your diet. All that means is simply be aware of what you're feeding yourself because you're going to have stressful days. You're going to have long days. And if you're constantly just taking down soda after soda, not having any proteins, not taking care of yourself, not eating right, it's going to show you're going to become tired easier. You're going to start making mistakes. Your mental focus is going to go away. Nine and 10 go hand in hand. Exercise and improving your diet are going to be critical in setting your stress. So look at that list, take it into account and understand exactly where you may need to make adjustments. Bottom line, it's amazing what one simple break can do for a person, whether it's an hour, a weekend, a vacation. The advantages of a reboot can do wonders to our attitude and our productivity. Remember friends, leadership is a privilege. Be sure and go check out more of our great Charge Up content at chargeuptoday.com. On behalf of all of us at Charge Up, we sincerely thank you for listening. Now go out and make a difference. And don't forget, my friends, charge up. Roger, we'll stop. That was a picture perfect end to a top fuel mission. Everybody, welcome back to Earth. Thanks for listening to Charge Up with Victor Pisano. Subscribe to the podcast at chargeuptoday.com.